Welcome back to Indiana News Desk. Well, as the new Indiana University Health Regional Academic Health Center takes shape on Bloomington's north side, city residents are growing more curious about the fate of the current IU Health Bloomington Hospital site. As Tyler Lake reports, one McDowell Gardens resident asked city limits about what's in store for the site. Mary Allen Lynch lives in McDowell Gardens, and she wants to know all the ways the monumental change from hospital to neighborhood will affect her. Everything from noise to street accessibility. So we reached out to stakeholders in the project to see how the planning process is coming along and how all this will impact the two single-family neighborhoods closest to the site, Prospect Hill and McDowell Gardens. Jack Baker is a member of the McDowell Gardens Neighborhood Association, and he has mixed feelings about the future of the project. There's a certain excitement that comes with that. Well, what, what in the world is going to happen when that hospital comes down? But he's also a pragmatist. And then um, we sort of get into the timelines um, of what, what's going to happen, and things uh, then have become more concerning because the future isn't, isn't well defined. Bloomington Deputy Mayor Mick Renison agrees that a lot of the details for the site aren't worked out, but he says there is a rough timeline. So we're going to have all the way through 2022 before the public could expect to see some redevelopment activity uh, occur on that particular part of the property. Baker says that means the site, which sits prominently on the corner of Rogers and 2nd Streets, will look a bit rough for a while. Probably that land is going to sit there for a while and be fairly barren and uh, not very attractive. And that may not sit well with some folks in the neighborhood. For those people who are a little concerned now, I suspect they're going to be a little more concerned when things actually, I'll we'll call it start. But Baker says many in the area are more concerned with what the site will look like after construction is done than while it's in progress. It could be uh, very much a neighborhood kind of build. It could be very much a commercial kind of build. Um, and I think from the neighborhood standpoint, we'd like to see a neighborhood in there. The makeup of the site is still up in the air, but a plan drafted by the Urban Land Institute last year based on citywide input attempts to address the city's housing shortages with a mix of single-family homes near existing homes in McDowell Gardens and multifamily units closer to heavy traffic on 2nd Street. Reniason says that report is a good place to start. Since we received this report, we've continued to engage the Hospital Reuse Committee. We've actually got a subset of that, a steering committee that's made up of 12 of the original 30 and the original 30 group or somewhere close to that group. Both of those groups we meet with quarterly. Baker is part of both of those groups, but he says he hasn't heard enough from the administration of Mayor John Hamilton. The previous administration was quite transparent. This administration seems to be more opaque. It seems to be more top-down. Decisions come out uh, and uh, they, they may or may not surprise you, but you don't know what the decision is until it comes out. He says that makes it harder to know for sure what's in the pipeline for the project. How is this project going to transpire? Are you going to put the project into one company's hands? And then that company, a big company, is going to take over, do the design, come in and do the build, and then bring the people in to, to fill it up. Renison wants to assure residents that's not the case. There was the fear we were going to turn the keys over to the site to somebody from out of Bloomington and they wouldn't do it the way that Bloomingtonians would want. We're not doing that. But he says the project won't turn out like some people wish it would. If we just say we would like to have a butterfly garden and nothing but single family homes in the market won't support that at a price point of $150,000 each, then that's, that's just a waste of a plan. Baker didn't say anything about a butterfly garden, but he is pushing strongly for the project to consist mostly of single family housing. I think we ought to start from the idea of 100% single family housing throughout the project and then peel back as we need to to put in whatever commercial elements that we think are necessary to support a neighborhood. But Reniason says the site is crucial to helping meet the long-term demands of a growing city. Our administration is pretty much on the record for we recognize there is a shortage of housing product and so we're trying to address it in owning land like this in the near downtown next to two historic neighborhoods, Prospect Hill and McDowell Gardens. That's a pretty good start. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Tyler Lake.